Welcome to Strathroy United Church. My name is Brad Morrison, and this is our worship service online for the first Sunday after Christmas Day, December the 27th. As you know, we're usually in the Golden Jubilee Room on this first Sunday after Christmas, uh, where we get to enjoy a potluck breakfast, lots of delicious food. Of course, we can't do that right now because of the pandemic. So instead, we'll have this worship online and I'll focus the time together, our conversation, on the same focus we have in the Golden Jubilee Room, a recap of the ministry that we've done through the year. So let's start with words from Scripture. We'll begin with this reading from Galatians 4, uh, verses 4 to 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. May God bless these words from scripture and may our reflections today uh, illuminate God's word within. What I want to do today is, as I said, review the mission that we've achieved this past year, especially through the challenge of the pandemic. And before I get into that, I want to explain something what I hope will be rather straightforward. God has a mission, and that mission has a church. We're the church. And in order for the church to enact God's mission, we do ministry. And the church has historically had five key, five core ministries that it's done historically. We do worship, we do teaching, we do outreach, we do fellowship, and we do proclamation ministry. And when we get all those things right, when we put them all together and work on them, that's how we animate God's mission. These are the five ministries that the church has been doing since its beginning, and uh, they're captured by these Greek words for worship, liturgia, sounds like liturgy, teaching, didache, uh, outreach, uh, diakonia, uh, that serving ministry, uh, fellowship or pastoral care, uh, the words koinia, it means the gathering of the, the congregation together for care, and proclamation ministry, uh, when we proclaim God's word or God's message, which is kerygma. Put them all together and do them well, and God's mission is done in a congregation. Leave any of them out, and then something's left out in that ministry. Let's take a look at this past uh, year, especially during the pandemic. And because of the pandemic, there's been a few things that have been lost when it comes to our worship ministry. And the most obvious one is our ability to uh, be freely in the sanctuary, and when in the sanctuary, uh, where there's only a few people now, we can't sing, we can't speak, that is a loss. But despite that loss, uh, we've done a lot of uh, adjusting as a congregation. We've learned how to worship online. Uh, we've learned how to worship outdoors on the side lawn when the weather is nice enough. And during the pandemic, we did communion, We've done baptisms. We've done confirmation outdoor. The reopen team has worked to figure out how to get us back into the sanctuary in September. Uh, custodian uh, team there did a great job of getting uh, ourselves uh, disinfected. That is the sanctuary disinfected. We learned how to do live streaming, uh, to use video that people in the congregation contribute to inform the liturgy. And when we're back in the sanctuary, despite the challenges, we, we didn't get, let it get in the way or keep us from doing some of the traditional services like Remembrance Day. Uh, and we're gonna look forward in the next few weeks to Andy doing pulpit supply. These are all innovative things that we've done for worship ministry during the pandemic. Well done, congregation. The next thing I want to talk about is that teaching ministry. And again, when it comes to our teaching ministry, a number of things have been lost during the pandemic. 
our ability to gather together in person for learning experiences like the Bible study, uh, children's ministry, uh, youth group, they fall under our teaching ministry, and uh, people weren't allowed to gather together. Our Sunday school or our worship children's worship program on Sunday morning, not happening just because of the challenges of having children together uh, in space with those outside their bubble. But we've, again, done a lot to adapt to the challenges of the pandemic. Uh, people who had never used Zoom before figured out how to get onto Zoom so we could have online Bible studies. Uh, Kaylee offering online youth group. Uh, and we have this book study planned for the new year. We also had a program to uh, keep this intergenerational connection between older folk uh, in the congregation and the children who used to be able to come to children's worship, the Pen Pal program. And I want to share with you uh, a piece of uh, art drawn by Sloan in response to the question that I raised uh, two Sundays ago when looking at the nativity scene. Uh, and Sloan's drawn this picture here of the, the Magi bringing gifts to the baby Jesus. I asked the question, if you could go see baby Jesus in the stable, what would you take baby Jesus for a gift? And Sloane's answer was that she would bring him medicine to make sure that he stayed healthy so that he could grow up to perform his miracles. And she also mentioned a shield to protect him from the bad King Herod. And Diana's answer was based in modern times. She said that she would give him a smartphone for taking pictures and videos of him to share with the world. Excellent gifts. Let's talk about outreach ministry. Again, a lot lost there. The excellent uh, hospitality meal outreach program that the congregation has done for years. The experimenting that was going on with uh, lunches on Monday afternoon all having to be halted because of the pandemic and protocols. But nonetheless, despite the pandemic, a lot of adaptation done. Uh, we had a pandemic response team that was established uh, with a Kathy and Brenda's leadership, doing some experimenting early on in the pandemic uh, with the drive up meal, uh, thinking about how that experimentation can continue. Uh, making masks for people in the community, for especially for uh, hospital visitors. The Advent Community Drive, which raised hundreds of items for donating to social services in town. Uh, making meals for the new youth center. Uh, and filling some gaps. Uh, projects happening in our community that couldn't happen because space wasn't available. We figured out how to do the toy drive that happens in our community outside in the winter on the front lawn of the church. Again, great job keeping that ministry alive and active during the pandemic. Fellowship ministry. Again, a lot lost there. The ability to bring people together and to talk, to spend time together offering care. Lost. The ability to do hospital visits, nursing home visits freely. Lost coffee time, uh, that fellowship hour after church, lost. But again, a lot of work to find new ways to stay connected as a congregation to do pastoral care. Early on in the pandemic, team got together, did telephone calls to people in the congregation, checking in on them to make sure that early on in the pandemic that uh, no one was falling through the cracks, figuring out how to do Zoom or to use Zoom for pastoral care. Uh, to figure out how to do visits on people's front lawns, uh, putting my car aside, hopping on my bike when the weather was okay, and visiting people from their porch or the front lawn, keeping a safe distance. We learned as a community how to adapt to the funeral restrictions, a big loss in being able to come together as a community for funerals, but people finding new ways to connect, even participating online. We even accepted new members, welcomed new members into our congregation while we were out on the lawn 
sort of uh, outside. No, we did the new members in the sanctuary uh, during the pandemic. To think that we have people joining the church even during these challenging times, I think is a wonderful uh, accomplishment. So well done. Let's take a look at proclamation ministry. Uh, what's been lost here? Well, we were in the midst of trying to figure out how we as a congregation can understand that strange word evangelism, uh, recruiting people, welcoming them into the congregation. Pandemic sort of put a halt to being able to invite people so freely to worship, but we found new ways to be a presence in the community and to let people know about uh, the mission that we're on. Doing online interviews early on in the pandemic to extend our uh, partnerships, our relationships with other social service agencies in town. But what we did is we used the resources that were unique to us. Uh, some knowledge with online tech, the network of people that you have in community to help put together those interviews. Uh, offering support to the hospital for their online memorial service, uh, both uh, Strathroy and four counties in Newberry. Uh, renovating the website because the website is our new front door into the congregation for new people in town. And although uh, it's a bit of a challenge feeling comfortable welcoming people or inviting them to worship, people have been experimenting with just the simple click of like, writing comments uh, in the comment section during the worship service, and even clicking share to let other people know that we have a worship service, we have announcements going on. Those five ministries are so important, but they require an infrastructure. They require a support system, and that's what our governance does. Uh, council, trustees, property, finance, m and We did some adapting during the pandemic when it came to governance. Believe it or not, we smashed the 60-minute record for a council meeting. Unheard of, I'm told, before, but we got not only the business done, but left time for fellowship and building friendships following a council meeting. Uh, we celebrated the ministry of John and Nancy uh, and the custodial work that they've done. We welcomed a new custodian, uh, Joe Reichel, into the congregation figured out how to do fundraising by making pot pies, figured out how to do donations online. No small things. This is the work that we've done so that we can be on mission for God. There's a saying, and I'll end with this, that uh, God's mission has a church. Strathroy United Church is one of those churches available for God's mission. And when we do the five ministries, when we come together in worship, when we make sure that we're teaching and learning, when we're focused on serving the community through outreach, and we're focused on pastoral care and fellowship for the people in the congregation, and when we're bold enough to invite people, to share with people the fact that we are a congregation and welcome them in, then we are squarely on mission for God in our community. That's uh, my reflection for today. I hope that your Christmas was a blessed one, uh, despite the challenges that we faced uh, going into it, despite being on lockdown right now. My prayer for you is that uh, if you're experiencing isolation, that you'll have the courage to reach out to someone so that you're not alone, and that if you have extra time, extra optimism, and you have the energy for you to reach out to others who you know may be isolated during this season so that you can be a source of good news and hope for them. May God bless you. May you go in peace to love and serve others. And may we enter into this new year uh, bold and confident, persevering through hardship so that we can be on mission for God. Amen.